Welcome to another unit in this R course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use the Apollo package for R to analyze data from choice experiments. In this context, well, I first assume you already installed the Apollo package, and I also assume that your data already is in a so-called long format. If this doesn't tell you anything, just check out the tutorial on how to get from wide format data to long format data, or rather, what long format data means. Well, as I said, we assume you have the Apollo package, assume you have long format data. Then I'm just going to load the Apollo package and the read XL, which just helps me to open Excel files where I just put my data before. It's also the first part here. This reads the file name and then imports it into my data set. So let's start with Apollo itself starts with the Apollo initialize, so there's nothing new there, just telling him, okay, we're going to start. Let me get to the controls. The first two part, here you can give it a name, nothing really fancy which you need, and you can write a short description, what are you going to do? Those two are just for your own sake to know what is actually happening, what you're doing here. The one thing which is actually important for Apollo is the third one, the individual ID. Here you need to have a variable in your data set, which is a unique identifier for all the participants. So you need to have a number which tells you like first, second, third participant and so forth. And this variable name is put into the individual ID. So in my data set, I have something which is actually called ID and identifies each of my participants. Then, because it's not called data set but database in Apollo, we're going to copy my data set into the Apollo database. And that's the first really important part. We're going to tell him which coefficients to actually estimate. And that's the Apollo beta. Here I'm going to start with the constant, or more or less what has the function of a constant, the ALC. And then for each of my different characteristics, I'm going to put a new coefficient here. Well, in this case, I'm going to do it like this because the first three, I just had two levels each. So I just need one coefficient here. And the last one I have three levels, but it's a continuous variable. So I'm only going to use one coefficient here as well. If you have nominal variables with more than two levels, you might have to use two or more coefficients here as well, because later on you're going to use two or more variables. Well, I think it's self-explanatory if you just know what you're doing with the estimation. So more or less for non-continuous variables, levels minus one coefficients for continuous variables, one per variable. Also, with everything you see here, it's equal to zero. It doesn't have to be zero, it's just the starting value for the estimation. So if you have a better estimate, which you know from before or from previous studies, you can set the coefficient to these values and you get a much better or faster estimate. Here in this case, I don't know anything about the outcome, so I'm going to start with zero not going to fix any of these coefficients to particular values. So that's why this part is empty. And then I'm just going to give all of these information to Apollo to check if it works out decently well. In particular, does he have enough coefficients, which is not so much clear at this point, or more importantly, do you have a working ID? Once he's happy with all of these informations, you can start with the analysis as such. And that's starting with the second part. I'm going to scroll down a bit. Here we have the probabilities, which is just copying everything from before. Same with the attach and the on exit part. The really interesting part and the part where you have to change something in this code is this part. In my approach, I'm going to assume we have two alternative choices. So the participant sees two choices can select one of the two choices. Or, that's a third alternative, he can opt out by saying neither of the two alternatives is what I prefer. 
Well, if he opts out, there's nothing really to estimate because he chooses none of those. So that's why we're going to set it zero. So the opting out clause ideally can be set to zero. For the two alternatives, we need to describe how did the two alternatives actually look like. And that's what this model is about. Here we have first the constants. And then we have for each of our, again, in this case, it's just one level. So one variable per characteristic. We have the coefficient times the respective variable describing this particular choice. So here with eigen2, alternative 1 has a certain value for eigen2. Alternative 2 might have a different value. That's why we have two different variables, eigen2 1 and eigen2 2. First one describes alternative 1, second one describes alternative 2. But I'm going to use the same coefficient in both cases because I'm going to just estimate one single coefficient. So this is what you have to prepare beforehand, the description of the two choices put into variables. And then you can just more or less do the same model over again, just variable describing the first choice, describing the second choice. And well, as I said, the opting out clause. This is just the classic layout, two choices, one opting out version. Of course, you can do this with more than two choices, then you would have an alternative three, four, five, or how many you like. Well, that's just to keep in mind, that's also the names we're going to give to these alternatives. And they are described in more detail in this part on the settings for the multinomial logistics we're going to use here. Well, we tell him there are three alternatives. We have alternative one, two, or three. And in the data set, you're going to find which choice the participant makes in the variable called choice. This variable choice can have three values. Could be one, then it's alternative one. Could be two, then it's alternative two. Could be three, then it's alternative three. So if you have a different name for the variable where you save the choices, put the name from your data set for the choices here. And depending on which values you're going to save alternatives, going to put the names for the alternatives, or sorry, the values for the alternatives here, here, and in that part. This point just says, okay, we have three alternatives, all three could be selected decently well. So this tells him, okay, you have your choices saved in this variable. They are using the three values, one, two, and three. They're called alternate or alt one, alt two, alt three. Not the same ones we find up here. Well, that's most of the work we have to do because the rest is just copying all of this together. Well, we could give it a new name here, which then could be changed in the model down here, but you could also leave it as is because that's just putting all the stuff together, telling him to actually estimate and then output the results. Once you do this, you're almost finished because now he displays the results from the estimation. But the problem with this is you get only part widths. You do not get willingness to pay. If you want to calculate a willingness to pay, you can use the Apollo Delta method. That's what I'm going to do here in this last part, this part here. So first off, he does it for all three variables for each of the three characteristics I had except for the price because well what he does is use the changes in the variables divide them by the changes in the prices and then estimate prices so here I'm going to calculate the willingness to pay for each of the three characteristics I have he's working with and that's the next part down here this coefficient from the price variable 
So that's something you have to tell him, the three coefficients and the coefficient for the price variable. And that's more or less it. You're going to tell him, use the delta method on this information up here, and he gives you the willingness to pay for each of the variables. Well, looks easy enough. Only thing you have to change is the coefficients up here. Well, maybe the ID for your uh, information. The coefficients you have to change here your models. Maybe change the choice variables name and how the different choices are actually implemented, which numbers are used for the different choices. That's more or less the only thing you have to do if you just want to use this Apollo method. Well, let's have a look how this works. Let's do this stepwise. I'm first going to read the data set. So he opens this, just prepared this here. It's the data set data. See it work decently well. Going up to the validate inputs. That's the part. He tells me all checks completed, all checks on database complete. So that's good to hear because this means it works decently well. Data could be used. Sometimes you get the information like the one up here. Several observations per individual detected based on the value of ID. That's not a problem. That's just to be expected. So don't care about this method, the message. As long as it says all checks completed in those two parts, everything works out fine for your analysis. So here we're ready to proceed with the analysis such. So I can select all the rest up to the model output down here. Again, gonna this part. At this point might take a few seconds to actually do the calculation depending on the size of your data set and so forth. That's my output here gives us first off the estimates, gives us standard errors, t values, p values, and the robust versions of both of those parts. So as I said, that's just the information for the part worth. If you want to have willingness to pay, we also have to execute the last part. So use the delta method. I'm going to use this here as well. And you see well, it's not so nice because it's a bit limited, but we have here the willingness to pay for my three different versions, three different characteristics. And well, that's about it regarding Apollo method in R to estimate results for our choice data. As I said, that's just the very first approach. That's just a very easy Multi, um, multinomial logistic regression we're going to use here. There are much more sophisticated approaches, but this approach already tells you how to proceed in general, what the basic idea behind the Apollo package is. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I say goodbye and see you next time.